In this video, we're going to take a look at mouse input in uh, XNA and Monogame. You may have noticed in previous programs when we move the mouse over the playing area window, uh, the mouse disappears, uh, and that's the default. And we're going to start off with something really simple. Uh, if you want the mouse to stay visible when you move it over, you just put this in Initialize, and you won't be able to see the mouse from that point on. Let's... Um, switch over to Visual Studio and let's open up a new mono game project so now we're back to um, mono game and we want a mono game Windows project and let's call this mouse input Hit enter, click on OK. And we'll get our program shell here in a minute. We'll go into game one, take a look. And we're just going to get rid of all of the default comments that are out there. Okay, so we will now we will go up to initialize here and we'll delete the comment in here as well. And what we're going to say is uh, is mouse visible equals true. And actually, before we do that, let's just run the program without that. And we will just verify that the default is for the mouse to be invisible when you move it over the game window. Okay, so here's my mouse. I'm moving around the window, and whenever I cross a corner here, it disappears. And whenever I'm here in the middle, it disappears again. So uh, let's just go back in now, and let's uncomment that. And let's run it again. And now when the mouse moves over the game window, it's still visible. Okay, mouse stays visible all the time. So... That's the first thing if you want to use mouse for input. Uh, you've got to be able to see it when you're playing the game. So the uh, first thing you have to do is you have to set is mouse visible to true. Okay, let's flip back over to our Word document. And our Word document tells us that if we want to read the input from a mouse, um, what we get is the mouse state. Uh, just like we get the keyboard state, just like we get the um, gamepad state, we're going to get a mouse state. So we need to declare a mouse variable in our program. So let's do a control C, copy that to the clipboard. And then let's flip back over here. And this needs to be declared up here with my other module level variables. Okay, now let's flip back over to Word. We want to retrieve the state of the mouse. Uh, we have to use the mouse.getState method. Okay. And uh, one thing to notice here, it says that uh, our variable mouse is lowercase m, um, but there is an object called mouse, which is a capital M. Okay, so let's copy this, and we will paste this in. Uh, let's go back over here to Visual Studio, and uh, we want to read the mouse every time we go through updates. So let's get rid of what's currently there, and let's paste that in. And I'm going to try something here. Let's. Uh, this is not in the notes. Let's just do console dot right line. And I got my capitalization wrong. And we'll write the state of the mouse on every single tick of the clock. That's automatically available when we do console programs, which we've been doing for a while. 
and I think that will make our console.write line legal. Okay, let's go ahead and start the program. And here's our output window, and on every tick of the clock, let's uh, make sure we can see our output window. So on every tick of the clock, uh, we're just getting um, mouse state. And um, I think I may have put the wrong. No, I did not. Um, so that's not really doing much for us. Let's flip back over to our Word document and let's continue. So the mouse has um, some properties. It's a struct and it has, so a struct is just a combination of variables that are all grouped together under the same name. So we've got mouse.left button, mouse.middle button, mouse.right button, mouse.scroll wheel, and mouse.x and mouse.y. Okay. So we've already done this. Um, if you want to refer to any of those fields, it's simply if this is the name of the variable, then it's mouse dot. If you want to call the variable something else, then it'll be something else dot. Okay. So it's real easy to refer to the fields of the mouse. So let's go back over here and in our main program, uh, let's write out mouse dot mouse dot y. Okay. And uh, we need to convert those to strings unless uh, we do something like this. If we set up a formatting string, and y is okay, I'm going to get rid of that space here. Let's go ahead and uh, run the program. And if it'll leave the output window visible for us here, uh, you can see when I'm up here, um, it is zero, zero should be right up here in the corner. It looks like I'm a little too far up. Yeah, I'll move down. Down here should be about 800, 400. Maybe 799, 4, not 400, 480. Uh, 799, 479, because we start counting with zero. So it's going to be one less than 800 and one less than 480. So. Uh, now you can tell exactly where your mouse is on the screen. Okay, let's go ahead and close that. And let's flip back over to our Word document. Okay. So if you want to find out if the mouse button is pressed, it's exactly like finding out if a button is pressed on the game controller. So we've got button state dot press, which is exactly the same thing uh, that we have when dealing with the uh, game controller. Uh, we can also determine if the mouse is inside of a rectangle. Okay, there is a contains option, and all we got to do is say if my rectangle dot contains mouse dot x comma mouse dot y, uh, then it'll return true. Okay, so. Um, that's what we're going to do. Um, we need uh, let's let's do a rectangle up here, and um, so let's um, let's add some content here. So let's go to content and content. Run our content pipeline manager, and let's add in some existing content, and um, we should have. Somewhere, I am not on the Briarcliff network right now, so I'm going to have to go look someplace else. So I'm going to pull in the white rectangle, open it up, copy it to the directory. And I'm going to build my content pipeline, close this, go back to content, right click, choose add an existing item. When I go to my content folder here, if I tell it to show me everything, 
It should be a white rectangle, that ping out there. Go ahead and add that. Okay. Now, if we're going to use a white rectangle, we're just going to throw it up there on the screen someplace. Uh, we need to have um, a rectangle to store that texture in. We need a texture to store it. Um, so we're going to do um, texture 2D. And we'll just call this um, box. And we're going to have a rectangle that we're going to call uh, box rectangle. And we'll set that equal to uh, 100, comma, 100, comma, 100, comma, 100. And I forgot uh, to say that I want to make this a new rectangle. Like that. Okay. Now, when I get down here to load content, I just have to load in that rectangle into my texture. So, uh, box. Let's see. I should put texture on the end of that. So box texture and the name of my file is white rectangle. Now every time I make one uh, pass through the game loop, I'm going to want to draw that on the screen. So uh, we'll leave the background cornflower blue. And we will uh, do sprite batch dot begin. We will do sprite batch dot end. And in between, we will sprite batch dot draw. We're going to draw as uh, we need a texture, so box texture comma we need a rectangle so we need box rectangle and we need a color and we'll go with white and I forgot my capital C on the word color okay so let's just run that real quickly we should see um, a in the upper left hand corner 100 pixels down and 100 pixels over uh, we should see a white box so you go over 100 down 100 and there you are and that's 100 by 100 now, what I want to do is I want to find out if my mouse is in that box or not. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to comment this out. We know that that's working now. Uh, you actually probably get rid of that one. But I want to know if the mouse is inside uh, the rectangle. So if uh, box rectangle dot um, intersects, no, not intersects contains mouse dot y then I'm going to do a console dot right line and I'm going to put uh, let's see um, mouse dot x let's do a format straight here too so So we want to print out the mouse, mouse coordinates, and um, so mouse.x and round mouse.x and mouse.y. Make sure you put a comma to separate the format string from mouse.x, otherwise you get the same error I'm getting. Okay. So when I print this out, um, this number should be in the 100s, and so should this number, because the only area for the box is from 100 to 199 uh, in both the x and the y direction. So uh, I'm only going to get anything printed out in my output window if the mouse moves in there. Okay, so the mouse is not in there now. Let's move the mouse in. And as we move it around, if we move it up here. Uh, that should be an X of 200 almost and a Y of around 100. Move it down here. They should both be around 200. And uh, once I move out of here, 
doesn't print that anymore because we're not intersecting anymore. Okay, so um, that's how to get input from the mouse. Let's go ahead and close this window.